So let me put it provocatively. This is graduation month in Boston. Imagine the new standard graduation gift to women is uh, uh, money to get your eggs frozen. Could happen. 10000 to $20,000 is what we're talking about. Some families certainly would be willing to invest that. Would that be a good thing or a bad thing for our society? So what's the good side? As we heard, women like this young woman on the partnership track or the tenure <coughs> track, I might say, have the option of delaying uh, uh, parenthood in a way that can allow them to be better parents than their older, more resourced parents, and also achieve other life goals. Indeed, if you look at the dominant marriage strategy in 1980, it was for men to delay their parenthood and then marry and impregnate younger women. Now, in the 2010s, we actually have a more gender equitable strategy where both partners can invest in themselves and delay. So those are the positive sides of this. Uh, the negative sides is that the movement in workplace law and in workplace culture has begun to build workplaces that enable women to have children and still work and produce their career. If every other woman who's trying to get a partner at her law firm uh, knows that they will be judged against her who delayed it, is that a pressure, is that a pressure against workplace accommodation? Moreover, many women may freeze their eggs, and there are some health risks of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, for example, low, but, but, but there. Uh, also, the expense involved and end up not needing to use those eggs. Will we see a secondary market and egg sale of frozen eggs, right? Once you've uh, made these eggs and you don't use them, you'll, you'll sell them. Finally, I would say, uh, who gets access to this technology? So delayed parenthood is really a middle class strategy, right? Especially if it's involving egg freezing. Unwanted pregnancies, uh, earlier age of marriage, earlier age of first child, much more common among a low socioeconomic statuses. And what essentially this happens to do is it reproduces hierarchy. The wealthy can wait, the wealthy can invest in their children, invest in their careers, and the hierarchy can be maintained and they can invest in those children. In a society like ours where IVF is not covered in most states, Massachusetts is an, an exception where uh, some insurers require it to be covered based on state law, uh, it is the case that we have access. But in a world where that access is differentially available, is this technology really going to be in fact reinforcing hierarchy and inequality? And I guess I'm also curious, um, I'm also curious about to the degree or which people delaying uh, having their first child then have the eggs, are they, whose eggs are they getting typically? Are they other educated people prolonging? Is there sort of a market for uh, the eggs of disadvantaged people who are making their eggs available? So right now the egg market is handled as a brokerage essentially. Fascinating difference between sperm banks and egg brokerages. Sperm bank is like employment. You go in, you mm -hmm. put it in the cup, and you only get paid if your sperm actually passes. Egg brokerage is a very different affair, right? You meet the couple, you're giving mm -hmm. the gift of life, and often these women are being recruited from college campuses across the, the world, especially high-performing ones. So there's definitely a strong, in both markets, a strong eugenic push to have a certain kind. But in general, in the current egg market, fresh eggs are preferred, therefore younger women. In a world where egg freezing becomes much more routine, you might have a more robust supply of eggs available for using someone else's donor eggs.